Hello Dr. Humans, welcome back to the channel and to today's video where we will be unpacking a super quick win on why on earth thiazide diuretics cause hypercalcemia. This one is an exam favourite so be sure to stick around so you can nail this on exam day. Okay, so in order to understand why thiazides cause high calcium, we just need to have a little picture of the nephron set up. So we go, we're nephron, proximal tubule, distal tubule. Okay, so now that we have that all set up, my first question for you is where on earth in this little nephron situation do thiazide diuretics actually work? Which part of this nephron do you think you have a 25% chance of getting this right? It is, of course, the distal convoluted tubule and it blocks the sodium chloride co-transporter. So by blocking the sodium chloride co-transporter, there's going to be less sodium coming back into the body here and therefore more sodium going into the urine and water follows sodium wherever it goes. So we'll also lose a little bit more water and that's how it works as a diuretic. But the question we're answering today is how enough does this cause us to have a high serum calcium? I mean, what's that all about? And this is to do with another part of the nephron entirely and that is the proximal tubule. Let me show you. If we just look at the, the proximal tubule and we've got our plasma coming in here in our filtrate. We've got like proximal tubule cells. So in here, we've got a lot of things going on, but we're just gonna pick out a few important ones, which are sodium, water, and of course, because we're talking about this today, calcium. Let's color them in because it's more fun. So basically what's happening here, the proximal tubule is our mass reabsorption center, mass recycling center. So everything coming in from your plasma, if you can think about how useful all that stuff is, right? Everything that's coming in there, you've got salts, water, glucose, amino acids. There's no end of like really handy things that are coming in here into the filtrate. So the first thing that the nephron will do in the proximal tubule is just mass reabsorb as much of everything useful that it can possibly see. And sodium is very useful, but sodium also helps to transport all the other things, right? Through all those little transporters. So in the proximal tubule, there's gonna be a lot of sodium reabsorption. And water follows sodium wherever it goes. So the water is gonna follow the sodium. But then what happens, there's a little bit of kind of solute drag that happens here, where there are other molecules that just as an innocent bystander, kind of get dragged across during this process. And calcium is one of those molecules. So it will follow the water and the sodium wherever it goes in the proximal tubule. But looking back at this diagram, we can see that we are blocking a channel in the distal tubule, the sodium chloride co-transporter. But what happens is as the body's losing salt and water, it's like, nah, we're not having this. They're very, very useful. So the next time that, that circulation makes its way to the proximal tubule, we're going to get more reabsorption of salt and water. And as a byproduct of that, we will just absorb more calcium into the bloodstream alongside this and we'll get high calcium, potentially. Not everyone gets this. Some people are more vulnerable than others. It's not like everyone on a thiazide is walking around with high calcium, but it is a potential side effect of this medication. So to summarize, lock this in for me for your MCQs and Dr. Life. If you block the sodium chloride co-transporter with a thiazide, this will ramp up salt and water reabsorption in the proximal tubule which can increase your calcium reabsorption. So more calcium going back into the body, less calcium into the urine. And sometimes we nephrologists actually use this side effect of thiazides when we're treating someone with calcium stones. If they've got a lot of calcium in their urine, sometimes we use thiazides to get around that, for example. So be aware of that side effect and be aware of that potential therapeutic use in calcium stones. Now there was a New England Journal of Medicine paper which had looked at hydrochlorothiazide in stones, but there were lots of criticisms of that paper. Nephrologists are still using this side effect um, to treat people with stones, but they're not using hydrochlorothiazide. They might use some other more longer acting um, thiazide diuretics, such as indapamide or chlorothaladone is the current thinking. So I hope that was helpful for your studies. Thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you again soon for some more higher learning. Bye.